56th man to lead the Springboks in Test match rugby, Faridu Dupre. Camille off the back there goes Faridu Dupre, the captain into the corner. The talent hits a target that nobody else can meet, but the genius hits a target that nobody else can see. And uh, that sums up Faridu Dupre for me. And Faridu Dupre takes it quickly. Faridu Dupre was one of those guys that can actually win a game on his own. And for him, it this wasn't a one-off thing. It actually became became a habit for him. The Springboks with Dupriya, and they could be in again. Furry Dupriya has picked up another try. He knows exactly what to do, but before, at least five seconds before, he's actually executing it. And Furry Dupriya, that is a try for a master strategist. The best player I've played with is only one name for me whenever I can think, and that's Furry Dupriya. Dupriya, little space for him. Can he go? From 2007 to 2010, I think he was the most influential rugby player in the world in whichever team he played for, whether it was the Bulls or, or the Springboks. Quickly taken by Farida Prayer! Try, South Africa! Incredible good thinking there by Farida Prayer. He is and will be regarded as one of the greatest nines that has played the game. September 2015, the Springboks succumbed to a semi-final defeat to the All Blacks to exit the Rugby World Cup. You doff your cap to a performance of immense character from both sides. For the Springboks, it was valiant, but ultimately just not enough. Within the agony of defeat was the sadness that this would be the last time many of this vintage would represent their country. One of those saying farewell to the green and gold was scrum half Farid Dupriya. His fabled career saw him win the World Cup, multiple Curry Cups and Super Rugby titles, playing vital roles in teams who were constantly enriched by his presence. Nominated twice for the honor of World Rugby Player of the Year, Dupriya retired with the reputation of a humble man known for his quiet authority by fans around the world. What's so great about Ferry is probably the most humble person that I know. He's just important that what he did, he did it his very best. He's quietly spoken, but mentally he's tough. He's the kind of guy that's just got the ability um, to say just enough that means a hell of a lot to a big group. Whenever he spoke or said something, it added huge value to our team. Players, coaches, people around the world, that's the way they'll remember him. The quiet man, the Springbok number nine, that always gave his all for the team. Faree's journey to the pinnacle of world rugby began in Pretoria on the 24th of March, 1982. You were a, you, you're a big family, but you were a little bit of a large lomaki. Yeah, I was, I was the youngest out of five kids, um, I was sort of late born. Uh, my brother is 18 years older than me, so I came out of, out of a big house. And my mom was a pianist and uh, my dad played rugby and, and when I was growing up, um, it was way before my time and everyone just always said uh, how tough a rugby player was and, and just the sort of person he was. So I was very fortunate in, in uh, growing up in that environment and, and, and just, just a house full of love. The love of ball sports blossomed from an early age. I can just recall whenever there was a ball available I, I would play and, and we were lucky enough to have a tennis, tennis court at our, at our house so we, we played tennis, we, we kicked ball kick a rugby ball there, we played soccer, we, we just played sort of everything and uh, yeah, it's difficult to say, I just sort of enjoyed what, what, whichever sport I played, I enjoyed it and uh, it's not really, there wasn't a stage where I was like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm good at sport, I was just enjoying it and, and I think that that's where I was very fortunate in where my dad was just, and, and my mom always just supported me whatever I did and there was just, just zero pressure at home. Sporting all around, I mean he was a very good tennis player as well. And the athlete. So, uh, but rugby was always his main interest. A former star eight man for the Blue Bulls, Fareed Dupree Sr. delighted in his youngest son's enthusiasm for the game. Always very quiet, yes. But uh, with his friends and his family, he's, <laughs> he's not that quiet. <laughs> 
Yeah, I always watch uh, rugby together on school level and on provincial level. And f from a very young age, he went with, with me to the rugby. And uh, we discussed it while they were playing and that he could see well, what, uh, what the pluses and the minuses is. You, you could just mention things and say, well, you, you watch a game and say, listen, this guy's going to kick. He said, don't kick. This is it. And then at the end, he's right. He, he, he could, all the circumstances around the specific thing, he could sum it up very easily. We practice a lot. And he on his own, uh, throwing the ball and kicking and passing and uh, perfecting his, uh, his skills. It's something I worked really hard on um, with Briggs, Pruer, Pruer Tire, um, just every day sort of practicing on my own. And it's, um, yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to be the best I can, I could be. And, 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 and so I, I worked really hard at it. When is your first sort of recollection of of playing sport for your school. Whenever we had a school break or whenever it was, we just played rugby and we tackled each other and it was shirts ripping. It was just, it was just, just schoolboys going and uh, going barefoot at it. And uh, I just loved the team sport. Finding young Faree's best position was a difficult task. It was always, always a discussion, which is so, sort of which position that I would wanted to play. And when I started playing rugby, obviously my dad was a was an eighth man, so I wanted to play eighth man. So I played I played number eight until I was uh, ten years old, and obviously I got a little bit small, and, and then I moved to to scrum off, and I, I sort of liked the, the number nine. It took a lot of practice to sort of get the passing right, especially off the left hand. So worked really hard at it, and yeah, I was fortunate enough to to play for my for my school's first team, and, and also. Um, played primary Craven Week for the Bulls. Ooh, that was in George, um, so I can still remember it was raining all week. So it was quite a quite a wet and a, and a difficult Craven Week to play in. But yeah, it was very enjoyable and just sort of a great experience. He was the smallest uh, uh, competitor there, and weighed only uh, 41 kilograms. So because of his size, he had to. Uh, develop skills to, to beat other people because he couldn't rely on uh, physicality. After his primary school days instilled a love of rugby, the Dupree family were left with the task of choosing a senior school for young Faree. They chose to send him to Afrikaans Huasian School or Afis as it's more commonly known. The prestigious all boys school based a stone's throw away from Loftus first felt. Were you always destined to come to Alfie's? So growing up, I knew my, my, my brother went to Alfie's and I, when I was at primary school, I used to go and watch some, some Alfie's games and it was always just somewhere where I wanted to go and I knew um, it was a tough decision to make because all my primary school um, sort of friends went, went to a different school close in to the area. So it was a tough one, tough decision to make, but one that I was, that was one of the best decisions I made in my life. When you start at, uh, at grade eight, um, sort of your matrix, is all, you, you look up to all of them. Um, your hundreds was actually one of my matrix, and up to this day, one of my best friends as well. Obviously, you can't recall all the things that, that we did together. Uh, then we didn't do much together, except for him giving me his food, um, him greeting me uh, the way he should in typical office style when you're a junior, so uh, in a respectful way. But yeah, I, I remember him, uh, small little, boy there from Pretoria based but very quiet uh, and he's in his place always early at school uh, I was in hostel he was uh, he was living in Pretoria so his dad always dropped him off very early and he was always one boy sitting there in the in the fear count of the school sitting there on his little suitcase and then we take his his snacks and his bread for the day. Johan Roots was another to join the school in his grade 8 year. I come from Wombos, Bella Bella now to give you an idea when, uh, when you go from a small town like Wombos to a place like, like Office, we were in, in, in uh, you're going to, you kind of could be a, well, good performer in a small school. Um, but when you get to Office, I think in our standard six year, there were more than 30 odd head boys from around the country that was standard six from other schools. Going into the school, you know that there's been, you know, big shoes to fill when you, when you go in there already. It's got a great uh, history. You just got a, a feel to it when you when you when you enter there in your first day at school in standard six, and when you leave there, it's uh, it's emotional. It's uh, it's the end of an era. 
it's just such a special tradition, and I think that uh, everybody's proud to be part of it. Um, uh, and, and I think it boils down to a lot of the history that it's got and, the, and a lot of tradition and the people that's part of it that makes it, that makes it special. Headmaster of AFI since 1992, Dr. Pierre Edwards recalls his first impressions of De Prea. Yeah, when we came here, we thank you for this one time to live in our life. Because the work of De Prea, we thank you for his father, the legendary blue ball, or the blue ball of Nordens Val, for the 60er years. We are not very much on the plan for De Prea. We thank you for this arme laat lamiki. Met zo'n so beroemde broer en zo'n so beroemde pa, men het ons geweet wat, wat gaan volg. What is the philosophy of rugby at that office? Mm. Om het te geniet, you. Ons het, uh, dis jy sê rede, hoe kom ons wegbeweeg het van beker competities. Um, dat ons ten die sterkste skole in, in die land kan speel. Want die, die nadeel van die beker competitie, jy speel die selfde skole. En het gaan net oor die aanspanne. By afies gaan het oor al dertig spanne wat elke zaterdag speel. En dis hoekom ons die in die bekendste en in die sterkste seenskoel in die land speel. I think fun is a, is a massive word. I think it's, it's not about you, it's about the team and it's about the school and it's about enjoyment. Johan van Graan's rugby journey to the Springboks coaching staff also began at Afis. I think the great thing about the Afis first team and all rugby teams at Afis, it's not all about the first team. I think it's more about presenting your school and, and presenting AFIS and you know that was a big thing for me and I was very lucky to be part of that AFIS tradition. You know when you get to AFIS rugby there's still a big board saying you know to win is, is important, to participate is, is a bit more important but to enjoy it is the most important of all and I really enjoyed my, my time at AFIS and I can almost remember every single game right through the five years that I, that I spent there so the enjoyment factor and you know, the, the mates, at the end of the day, it's not about the games you remember, but it's about the mates that played in those games together with you. And now I've got some very fond memories about the Uffies. The school was a perfect breeding ground to nurture young talent and an ideal platform from which Faree could hone his skills. Coming up after the break, we witnessed Dupree's first steps in the journey of his career.